they've got a good migration policy overall and it's much clearer than the Labour Party. You know, if they're careful, there will not be five families. There will be one small family sitting, if they're not careful, sit, one small family sitting on the opposition benches. The week began very dramatically with the government facing the so-called five families within the Conservative Party as it tried to get its Rwanda bill through its second reading in Parliament. There were some firm words from the right-wing factions spoken for by ERG boss Marc Francoise. We have decided collectively that we cannot support the bill tonight because of its many omissions. But in the end, the government was able to avert danger, for now at least, with a comfortable majority of 44. Uh, William, it's really very unusual for a, a Prime Minister to be on tenterhooks about whether he's going to get through a second reading of a bill. Uh, yes, well, there have been lots of votes on tenterhooks over the last, uh, over recent years, remember, but uh, yes, on second reading of a bill, quite unusual. He did win by 44 in the end, so we have to, we have to remember that he, he did have a, a pretty good victory in the end. But I, I've certainly been very concerned uh, up to that vote about so many people in the Conservative Party still arguing about this instead of saying, well, they've got a good migration policy overall, and it's much clearer than the Labour Party. You know, if they're careful, there will not be five families. There will be one small family sitting, if they're not careful, sit, one small family sitting on the opposition benches. Uh, and so I think they do, they would be better to support the Prime Minister uh, through the remaining stages of this bill, which will come up in, uh, presumably, uh, through January and February. Diane? Well, I'm, uh, I, I usually agree with William, but actually this isn't a migration policy. The Rwanda part is only a tiny bit and by itself actually will make very little difference. I mean, it's quite interesting. If you look at the treaty rather than the bill, um, it says its major purpose is to act as a deterrent. So in other words, it's a sort of international PR thing. It isn't really a, a piece of legislation to deal with the number of people trying to come to this country. And there is a real problem. I think William and I probably agree about that. There are an enormous number of displaced people who are fleeing either from hunger or from wars, and that, that is a real issue. But I don't think threatening people who have left out of fear from the country that they're going to go to Rwanda is actually m amounts to a migration policy. Well, I want to come back to migration more broadly in just a second. But William, how difficult is this going to get in the Lords? We we heard from the former permanent secretary in the Foreign Office earlier in the programme, Lord Macdonald, who was talking about how he opposed it, he would be taking it apart. Many peers share that view. If it struggled to get through second reading in the Commons, it's going to really uh, face a huge amount of hurdles in the Lords, isn't it? Certainly, we'll have a lot of opposition in the House of Lords, but of course, it, the House of Lords always weighs the um, the votes in the House of Commons and the the elected House having the ultimately the right to get its way. And certainly, if it was made tougher, you know, if the um, uh, you heard there from Marc Francois, the five families and so on, asking for the bill to be made stronger in certain respects, well, then the opposition to it in the House of Lords would be more emphatic and that's one of the futile things about that that rebellion that we saw I think because if they were actually successful they wouldn't be able to get the bill through at all they, they would defeat their own objective um so certainly it's a big problem for the government the um getting it through the, the commons and the lords and Diane is quite right that it's only one part it is a one part of a wider immigration policy but I think any government is going to find a migration policy without some kind of deterrent uh, for illegal migration is always going to have a big hole. And uh, that, that would be found by a Labour government as well as a Conservative government. Diane, do you think that if Rishi Sunak can't get this flagship legislation through, he should just uh, call a general election early next year? Well, I think he should anyway, for a different mm. reason. I just think that, you know, we have uh, a situation where he doesn't have full authority over his own party um, and the government really has run out of steam and it is time for a fresh start. Really? Say, I hope that if up? we have an election, it would be us. But it needn't be. I still think it needs a fresh start um, and, it, and that would be good. So I, I hope in a sense that he does it because it's the right time. But if it's but, but because he's forced to because the, uh, over this bill, 
um, you know, that would be another way. But but clearly, I think the country is ready for another election. Uh, put up or shut up, William? Well, there's clearly there'll be a general election the next year or so anyway, and the Prime Minister should have that when he's ready for it. But the, on this issue, there should be a clear choice between the uh, between the parties. And all of this this week has been about what the Conservative policy is on migration. But I haven't noticed Labour spokesmen being very forthcoming about all of their policies right. on migration. Diane, and, um, what, what's I mean, your I think, I think the important thing is, the, the, I mean, I think what we, again, we both would agree on is deterrence. But I'm less keen on deterring those who are genuine refugee um, seekers, who are really coming from horrendous situations, be that in, in Syria, Iran, Afghanistan or wherever. Um, I want to deter the people traffickers. I mean, you know, they are the most horrendous group of people. We often, you know, look back to the slave trade and say how awful it was that the, the traffickers were doing this. But we have at a small scale, you know, extraordinary wicked people selling lies to potential travellers. Yeah, I mean, they the government probably... says it wants to cut down on the people traffickers. I mean, that, that's but like saying... But they don't appear to be you, doing it. It's yeah. no good them just saying it. They really have to but take into much action. This year, you know, one another shame about this row uh, this week is that the, the small boats are actually down this year, and Rishi Sunak has been achieving a lot on that. Right. And well, I'll back, tell you what's not the down though. William, backlog of asylum claims is down as well. So, but, but, but William, a there's, a, story there's a record seven hundred forty-five thousand net migration figures, legal migration. Um, so, I mean, what needs to be done about that? Because I think there's a there's a fair bit of an agreement across a lot of political parties that that figure is too high. What what's what would you advocate beyond what the government's already done on that? Well, they have announced a lot of things in the last few weeks, as you know, including on uh, de particularly on uh, dependents uh, coming in of students and other workers and increasing the salary um, levels required for visas. Do you think so all of that will do the trick, though? Is it enough? Well, the estimate from the Home Secretary was that that would reduce the numbers by 300,000. Now, there is a balance in these things because Diane is quite right. We ought to be giving refuge to people who are uh, fleeing desperate situations. We've always done that and we always should. We need a, a, a large number of migrants for the health service and for our economy. So people on the right of politics have to acknowledge that there will be a considerable scale of migration in the future. But people on the left have to acknowledge you have to be able to control it and right. it has to be at a level that the country can support and regard as sustainable there is a middle path there right well, we're one going... of the issues sorry, sorry just one final issue i mean one of the attractions of, of if you like um uh, economic migrants as opposed to the ones i'm i've been discussing is that it's much easier when they come to our United Kingdom to get jobs and that because we don't have identity cards. Mm. And I myself very much regret that when the coalition government came in in, in, in 2010, they abolished the idea for um, 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 for identity cards. In fact, oh. the Ukrainians here the previous, the do have them. Yeah, the but previous Labour important. government abandoned that as well. We've